Welcome everyone back to another episode of the FD Build. We are two big ticket items away from getting the FD tuned. On today's episode, we're going to be installing a 255 wall barrel fuel pump as well as the sake bomb fuel pump harness. Let's get into it. In the trunk here. So yeah, you have your four access bolts to pull the cover off and then you have your two harnesses here for the fuel pump and then the uh, gas gauge. And then you have your two lines, obviously remove that. And then there's these two uh, 10 mils that are on the cover of the fuel pump hanger. So obviously remove that and then you're able to pull the uh, the smaller fasteners that are on the actual cover to pull that out. The old fuel pump. So this guy here had a little collar that sat on top right here. But with the new wall barrel, you're gonna have to cut this and run like an inline hose. And it has to be specific for fuel tank usage. So, you know, you can't just use any fuel line. It has to be like in tank specific. So I ended up cutting this off of the hanger here. And then this guy's gonna go away. But what it's kind of like a prone issue with FDs are connectors here. They end up getting like toasted and in this uh, in this body right here. So if you see this going bad, more than likely your FD is not gonna start. But luckily for me, this was actually in really good condition. So what I ended up doing was deep pinning these guys mm -hmm. and then taking the wall barrel uh, harness connector and then repinning it into the factory connector. And, you know, everyone says that this is not the best way to go about it, but I'm not trying to make, you know, insane power or anything like that. And eventually I'd like to do the radium intake fuel system for the FDs, but you know, it's a pretty penny. So this is gonna just, this is just gonna be what it's gonna have to be, honestly. But I'm pretty confident that the FD is gonna run pretty well with this and with the socket bump harness it'll cut a lot of the amperage that this connector sees so all right got our wall barrel set up ready to go so i put the new sock on and then there's this little uh, retaining ring that slides over this thing was a pain in the ass to put on by the way but it's so hard to film with you know just one person right now so, but yeah this is on next we'll be putting the spacer grommet to get this to fit in the factory hanger metal bracket that goes on the hanger too as well and then pretty much ran submersible 5 16 hose in line so it should get a good stream of fuel from it and then this guy might look weird to you guys but my fuel gauge wasn't working and so there's supposed to be like a sock here and this actually like uh, at the end here kind of kicks out so I ended up cutting that and then taking a uh, Can-Am, um, those motorcycles and taking their uh, fuel tank floater and installing on here. So I'm hoping that that will make the fuel gauge work. Now that we have the wall barrel fuel pump installed, next up is gonna be the sake bomb fuel pump harness install. So pretty much the reason why I'm going with this, you can make this uh, harness on your own, but I just wanted something super short, super sweet, plug and play. The most intrusive thing that you might have to do is you have to depin the harness connector on the car to fit in here and so that won't be super hard but it just all this is just plug and play and then we're going to run the ground into the trunk here and then the power wire is either going to go to the battery or and i'm told that there is a uh, 12 volt source on the uh, fuse box inside the car so we'll check that out too obviously we're going to pull the cover off and get the harness out of the cover and then the sticky part comes up there's this plastic uh sheathing that you have to find the split in there and then get the expose all the wire here and then this was all wrapped in um, electrical tape so once you get the electrical tape out it's what the instructions tell you to do just to get the wires visible next step was to document where the color coding on the wire is on both sides so when i deep in this to put the sake bone harness on i know exactly where it goes and so the deep paint process this kind of stumped me a little bit I had to ask for help but uh you'll take your deep pin kit and then here there is a clip on the outside so you want to run your deep end tool on the inside here and push this clip outward and you'll see the tab pull out and then this will pop up and then you're able to take like i don't know like a needle nose or something just to pull this off the orange connector out now you have access to taking your deep end kit and getting to the connectors here to pull the wires out. All right, so when you get the white connector pulled off, you're gonna have four wires in pin form. And Sake Bone provides their own connector that you're going to plumb the same way. So the color coding that was originally with the white connector in the same way with their new connector. 
from there, you're gonna... So with the original white connector that came off OE harness, when you put the new cycle uh, connector on, this, you're gonna just follow what they have instructed and it should look something like this. Just straight up plug and play. And so highly recommend that you put your boot cover before you connect the pins into the connector because it sucked trying or taking the pins off again just to put that boot on because I didn't follow directions very well. But this guy will go through your plate and will end up being connected into the white red to white then black to black and on the other side will be uh, green white to yellow and then blue to blue will make sense to you once you finally see it all connected because this will actually sit off <clears throat> this won't go into the plate this will actually sit off on its own but the new harness will actually go into the um, factory plating and once you get all that stuff connected, I ran my ground to the ground connector here in the trunk as provided per the instructions. And then they give you like a ton of wire to uh, run to either your battery or the fuse box under the kick panel. And I'm actually gonna show you guys where I plan on hooking this up because I don't wanna run this through the firewall. I actually really liked how uh, Full Detail Automotive did their uh, harness and the harness or the connection point actually is really smart and I didn't know that these were these guys here were 12 volt sources. I don't know if you guys can see that too well but where my finger is yeah, so I'm going to cut off that end there and then get a mail fitting and then run it into here and then plumb the rest of the wiring through the paneling here underneath the carpet and then have it run through here. And I'm actually going to put the relay, once I get this guy out, I'm actually going to tuck the relay into here. I think it'll look really sweet. I was getting my butt kicked, so I actually had a friend come over that did this on his FD, help me out. I'm on stock ECU, and I guess just like this little bump in voltage and uh, fuel pressure. It's like even when the car is warmed up, and then my air fuel ratio gauge is saying like, like high 10s, low 11s um, air fuel ratio, and I pretty much like smoked out my house. The whole house smelt like gas, and uh, the wife wasn't too happy. Let's just say that. So definitely stay tuned. We are. I'm hoping to hit 300 horsepower. That's my goal with this car. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the content, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.